Guys, there's a few major problems I see in the markets today. First one, complacency. Now you might be wondering, what do you mean by market complacency? Guys, I don't think people are factoring in the downsides of the market. They're becoming so used to good times, then when markets go down, they rebound, buy the dip, that there's no such thing as people thinking to themselves, well, is there a better opportunity for my money? You know, before we had the S&P at 4,800 with 0% interest. And the argument was, hey, at 0% interest, I can't get my money to do anything in the the bank account. Of course, I'm gonna go to the stock market. And that's what drove these stock prices higher. But now what do we have? We have 5%. You can get a a 90-day treasury at 5.4% and you have the market at all-time highs. I don't think people are giving proper credence to the fact that markets can be a little excited. There are downside risks to the market. How can you have a market at the same price with interest rates from 0% to 5% and so fast too? That's a concern of mine. Second concern, euphoria. We guys, we've had so many things. We've had electric vehicles. We've had crypto still ongoing. We have now AI. Guys, anybody remember the internet? The internet literally changed the world. And it's amazing to me. You go back to every economic boom. Ready? Cars. Airplanes, um, computers, TV, radio at one point was an economic technological boom. All of these things were changing the world. And guess what? How many of these, these companies stood the test of time? Very, very few. In fact, in the car business, basically only three companies are around from 1900, 1910 to now. Airlines, how many airlines have gone under in the last hundred years? Computer companies, anybody remember Gateway Computer? <laughs> Anybody remember that? I do. TV, TVs. Oh my gosh, everybody makes a TV. Doesn't mean just because something's booming that every company involved. The internet. The internet was the big, I truly believe the internet was the foundation of our economic boom and our technological boom for a long time. And guess what? How many companies went under the internet? Amazon went from $113 a share down to six, even though their fundamentals were getting better. That is the euphoria I'm talking about. Electric vehicles were the euphoria a couple years ago, and we still have Tesla. But apart from that, everything else is down 80, 90%. Crypto, crypto is still ongoing. I give those guys credit. I give them credit. I don't get crypto. I don't think it's an asset. I think it's a purely speculative play. I'm more along the lines of Jamie Dimon. Just stop talking about this crap. But AI is a new one. And when did AI start? Just in the last eight year and a half where it got really big. Paul, you don't get it. This is what I love. When I was saying EV is the current fad, it'll go away. Paul, you don't get it. It's changing the world. Crypto, it's the current. Paul, you don't get it. It's the blockchain. Paul, it's the AI. You don't get it. Okay, cool. I mean, did I not get the other ones? I can get, AI is absolutely changing our lives and will continue to change our lives for a long time. It doesn't mean that every company involved with AI should get boosted because of it. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's a major problem in this market, that euphoria. And of course, It leads to the thing I keep hearing the most right now. It's different this time. The four most dangerous words in investing. It's different this time. Guys, spoiler alert, it's not different this time. At the end of the day, $1 is still $1. Now you might sit there and say, well, Paul, $1.50 years ago is worth, okay, got it. But at the end of the day, a dollar is still a dollar. And you should pay more for companies that can grow their revenue and profit faster. Absolutely. And technology companies can do that, but they can also decline a lot faster too. I truly believe in paying a premium for high gross margin businesses that can sit there and reinvest their capital and increase their profits. But it's not different this time, guys. Money is still money. A 1% return is still a 1% return. I don't care what company you get it from. It's still at the end of the day, you have to sit there and try to figure out, okay, if my risk-free rate right now is 5%, what do I have to earn in order to decline cash and go into a risk? Now, we can make assumptions all day long. But when I see people just buying companies blindly because they say AI, when we start to keep track of how many times a company says AI in their investor call, come on, it just screams issues. When I see the people I see buying these companies, they're not people I respect. They're kids. They're literally kids. I still remember in 1998 reading a book by a Wall Street whiz kid who made 34% of his money. And I remember thinking to myself, that guy is awesome because I bought into it. 
But at the end of the day, what happened to him? Nothing. Nothing's happened to him. I've seen nowhere. I can't even remember the guy's name. This happens all the time. My good friend, Kathy Wood. I haven't said this in a while, but I'll say it again. Kathy Wood will eventually retire when her fund goes even further down and she'll claim it's because she wants to spend time with her family. It's not going to be because of that. It's going to be because she failed. Because guess what? Disruption is not a business model. Disruption is not an investment model. Those same companies she loves that disrupt, guess what they do? They also issue hundreds of percent more in shares, diluting all the investors who've given their hard-earned money. She said to people, judge me on my five-year returns. Has anybody seen her five-year returns? Don't get me wrong, guys. We're all going to make investment mistakes. But when your entire thesis gets disproven because you're jumping around from investment to investment, it just doesn't work. So what's the solution to all this? Guys, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. But before I get into that, I want to tell you a quick story. And this is the important part about investing that I want you to do. Back in 2006, I had two friends of mine. That was a wee lad of 25 years old. But two of my friends had just started out their careers, talking about starting a family. They sat me down and said, Paul, you want to save for retirement? I said, guys, let me ask you a very quick and easy question. If stocks fell in half today, what would you do? I remember the wife kind of thinking it was a trick question. She looked at me and said, well, I'd buy more, right? Beautiful. You get it. And I've told the story a thousand times because it's so important. And I remember thinking to myself like, oh, she's going to do great in investing. Fast forward. The market kept going up and up and up. It peaked in October of 2007. Fast forward to big, early 2009, late 2008, I get an email from her. Paul, what is going on here? This thing is incredible. This thing is crazy. This recession, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, if you remember our conversation, I said, if stocks fall in half, what would you do? You said you'd buy more. And you know what she wrote back? You're actually buying more? Yes, aren't you? No, this is not what I expected. Stocks are in half, but the world's falling apart. I remember thinking to myself, what would it take for stocks to fall in half? It would take some sort of story that looks so bad. So what's the solution to all this? Dollar cost average. Because as much as I might criticize my friend for saying that, we've all been there. I've been there. I question my, my, my investments sometimes when, they start, when the stock goes down. But if you dollar cost average and a low cost ETFs, you have to worry about those things. You just realize the world's going to do bad. It's going to do well. The extreme statement I want to make for you, if you really believe the stock market's going to zero, it doesn't matter that you have cash. So you might as well stick along with it because it doesn't matter if the stock market goes to zero, you're going to have zero and the world's going to have nothing. It's going to be who has the most guns and the most land. That's all that's going to matter. So just stick with it. Dollar cost average, take thinking out of it. But at the end of the day, we all like picking individual stocks. So pick a process that makes sense to you. For me, I like buying mispriced cash flowing businesses, non-sexy businesses. I look at what everybody else is searching for and I avoid that. I look at stocks that are down a lot, 50, 60, 70% general businesses. Guys, young people haven't seen a bear market. It's 15 years of this bull market. A lot of people out there, if you're 40, you were at the beginning start of your career when that bear market occurred last, the real bad bear market, the great financial crisis. Yeah, we had the crash of, of COVID and we had a 2022 bear market, but a really, really scary one, that was 2008, 2009. So it's been a long time. Even my brother, when he comes to me, he goes, he'll say things to me, he goes, Paul, remember, I haven't really experienced a bad market that lasted a long time. That's important to understand. So guys, if you want to see me analyze the 30 companies I do want to own as they go lower, watch this next video. Thank you for your time.